Matthew just didn't take. Good afternoon, commissioners. The time is 4.01 p.m. Madam Chair, you have quorum. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. We have quorum. We'll move to item number one on our agenda, and I'll call the meeting to order so we can begin the Oklahoma City Arts Commission's August 16th, 2021 regularly scheduled meeting. Before the commission votes on each item, I will introduce staff to provide details on each case. I will ask if the Arts Commissioners have any questions. I'll ask if the applicant has anything to add, and I will ask if any members of the public wish to speak. If you wish to address the Arts Commission, you will be recognized. You will go to the side podium one at a time and state your name and address for the record and begin your comments. Please limit those comments to no more than three minutes. We will now conduct a roll call. So Mark, can you conduct a roll call for us? Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Bailey. Present. Commissioner Kovash. Present. Commissioner Salyer. Commissioner Booker. Commissioner Chambers. Present. Commissioner Cooper. Present. Commissioner Duong. Present. Commissioner Eichmann. Present. Commissioner Hill. Present. Commissioner Loftus. Here. Commissioner Mosant. Here. Commissioner Ramirez. Commissioner Seward. Commissioner Smalling, Commissioner Williams. Madam Chair, that completes the roll call vote. You have quorum. Thank you. Our next item is agenda item number two, approval of the meeting minutes from our July 19th, 2021 regular meeting. I hope everyone has had time to read through the minutes and if there are no corrections to be brought to our attention, I would entertain a motion in a second. So moved. Second. So we had a Initial motion from Commissioner Loftus and a second from Commissioner Kovash. Any further discussion? Mark, can you please call a roll call vote? Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Bailey? Yes. Commissioner Kovash? Yes. Commissioner Salyer? Absent. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Duong? Uh, yes. Commissioner Eichmann? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Loftus? Yes. Commissioner Mossant? Yes. Commissioner Williams is just checking in. Commissioner Williams, do you vote to approve the minutes? He was not present. Not present. Madam Chair, that completes the roll call vote. The motion passes. Okay, moving on to item number three, items for discussion and action. Our first item, item 3A, is an introduction code update by Assistant Planning Director Lisa Cronister, representing all wards. Um, Lisa, welcome to the Arts Commission meeting. Hello, glad to be here, everybody. Thank you for having me. <laughs> So yes, I'm here to present uh, an, uh, an update on uh, the proposed new sign code that planning staff and others have been working on for since the beginning of 2020. So I don't have to tell you it's been a long year. Um, so I'm going to uh, update you on what we're doing and why, just a big picture related to the whole sign code. Um, and then I'll go into more detail about uh, proposal, proposed changes uh, to the murals section. The, um, so th this presentation is for informational purposes only. We're not asking for any action. I'll be back uh, hopefully by November 
uh, to ask for a formal recommendation uh, on the new sign code. So what are we doing and why are we doing it? The, the primary purpose of the entire code update pr project is to ep implement recommendations from Plan OKC, which is Oklahoma City's comprehensive plan that was updated in 2015. And uh, so that's the specific purpose, but the goal of the entire code update is to make development uh, more efficient and with better outcomes. Uh, it focuses on four portions. One is updates to the planning and zoning code. We'll also look at the subdivision regulations. Uh, we are uh, here looking at the sign code now. And then we'll, uh, throughout the process, look at other related development codes. So it's, uh, it has been a multi-year project. It will continue uh, for several more years. Uh, right now, like I said, uh, we've focused the last uh, 18 months on updating the sign code, but at the same time, we are also uh, digging into proposed updates to the planning and zoning code. So why do we need to update the sign code? There are specific Plan OKC policies related to signs that I'll go over in more detail here in a minute. Um, we're in phase two of the code update right now. A report that was done as part of phase one specifically recommended changes to the sign code. Uh, in the last several years, there have been some uh, sign cases involving billboards at uh, Planning Commission and City Council that have been uh, controversial and have resulted in a in council passing a moratorium against using uh, part of the rezoning process to install billboards. That's still in effect. It's been uh, extended a few times. Um, there are recent court cases that I'll also go into a little more detail about the extent to which municipalities can regulate signs using content. And then there were, uh, over the years, there have been many concerns on the part of industry and business and residents about what types of signs are appropriate and where they are uh, appropriate. So the comprehensive plan, Plan OKC, it had specific policies. Um, one, uh, to look at uh, adopting new citywide site design and building regulations that includes signs. Then there was another policy that um, recommended looking at ways to reduce sign clutter, improve the aesthetics of design, uh, consider limits to the size, height, and number of signs, and look at uh, ways to do proactive enforcement of uh, illegal signs. So that's, that's where we started with this effort. Then the phase one report and study that was done uh, several years ago, it recommended that the new sign code be highly graphic and user-friendly. I know many of you have looked at our existing sign code and it is in, in our existing code and it's a lot of text. It's very hard to figure out what's allowed and what the rules are. Uh, the phase one report recommended content neutral sign standards and um, it also recommended uh, anything we could do to make more clear, provide more clarity about pr procedures and the process and reduce timelines for uh, things to be approved. So you're probably wondering uh, by now, is a mural a sign? We've had this uh, discussion a lot. I'm sure you have too. And the answer is uh, yes, legally, technically, it is a sign. A sign is defined as, as a thing that is designed to attract attention, which uh, murals are. I mentioned uh, recent court cases. Since 2015, there have been uh, several uh, court cases at, uh, starting at the Supreme Court and in the various district courts um, that uh, found that, that challenged 
the rulings in those cases challenged uh, the extent to which cities could distinguish signs based on their content. So right now, uh, the city's sign code is uh, structured, it's all about content. It's structured around the definition of accessory signs and non-accessory signs. So accessory signs are signs that are related to the use of the building, like um, um, uh, McDonald's hamburgers. You know, that's related to McDonald's as a, as a business. But then there are other signs uh, that are non-accessory, and that is they're not related to the use of the building. And we would typically think about those as advertising, and then even more specifically, billboards. So those are messages that have nothing to do with the use on site. And um, so the existing sign code has different size, number, height restrictions for each of those types of signs. And while it sounds a little clear cut, it actually gets to be very challenging when you're sometimes when you're trying to define um, by the content if something is accessory or non-accessory. And that's what uh, the courts are finding that it shouldn't matter what the sign says. Uh, if you have to read it to decide what the rules are, then you've crossed the line over uh, stepped over a boundary of what uh, cities uh, can regulate. So um, to uh, start uh, the sign code update, we began with a lot of existing information that you are probably familiar with. One uh, was uh, the updated murals policy that was done um, in uh, 2020 that was part of the Arts Master Plan recommendations. There was also a murals task force um, assembled uh, to make uh, recommendations. Those included um, looking at ways to make the process easier for applicants to understand, uh, including a more streamlined process, and including more uh, clear definitions and criteria for the murals permitting process. We uh, also had uh, several meetings with the stakeholder advisory team. Uh, this uh, team was appointed by the mayor to assist and guide the, the whole of the uh, code update process. Um, uh, your chair, uh, Ms. Bailey, uh, has been part of that, so uh, uh, she knows. Um, uh, a lot about what we've done with that. There's also, we've also had several meetings with the policy committee. The policy committee is made up of the planning commission and city council members who are part of the SAT. We also have held many, many focus groups with residents, with industry, with architects, landscape architects, engineers, business owners to understand um, what their concerns were about the existing code and their ideas for improvement. And among those was um, a focus group with mural artists to, to drill down even more into uh, what their concerns were. So with, with all of that effort, uh, we arrived at a proposed new sign code. I think the benefits of the new sign code will be that it's uh, highly graphic and user-friendly as was recommended in the phase one report. Um, it uh, removes uh, this uh, process of trying to identify signs by what they say, uh, improves uh, code enforcement, uh, streamlines the uh, approval process for murals, uh, which I'll again go into in more detail, and it provides flexibility uh, for um, other types of signs. So again, just looking at the whole, the whole big picture of the sign code, um, it'll move, the new code will establish a new article in chapter 59, article 16, that will move article five of chapter, of the existing chapter three over. So that whole part will move over and be restructured 
Um, the existing code regulates by content. The new code won't. It will only regulate by physical feature. So um, if we're not regulating by content, uh, then what do we regulate? We, there's many things to still regulate. Height, number, size, material, whether it lights up, where it is on the site. Um, you know, anything having to do with the physical sign is what we are regulating, much of which we already regulate. So the a new sign code, um, it uh, combines all of the regulations for signs into tables. So you read across on the top for your zoning district, you read across on the left, or read down on the left uh, for, for what you're looking for, size, height, number, and then you read across in the table to find out uh, what the allowance is. All uh, types of signs, um, our company and tables are accompanied by uh, graphics to and photos to further illustrate, you know, exactly what we're talking about. So, so now I'm going to get into the detail of murals. I kind of went quickly through that first part. So murals, what we heard from stakeholders, and then I'm sure several of you have heard before, was, um, you know, just, we just have to have a more streamlined process. Uh, uh, it has to be quicker and easier for applicants to install a mural. And part of that has to do with, uh, you know, some murals are a response to current events. Um, and, and even if they're not, they're still in response to, you know, the artist's need to, um, to express themselves as relative to the property owner wanting to uh, beautify or improve their property. So could we please get a streamlined process? Um, could, and um, as part of that, maybe some clearer definitions would, would help in the permitting. Uh, so those were what we heard from more external stakeholders, but, but city staff is also a stakeholder. And city staff um, believed that permits, sign permits, some sort of permit was still necessary and perhaps the only way to distinguish murals from graffiti. So the proposed approach um, is to change a mural. Murals right now are a conditional use across, so in most zoning districts, they would be a permitted use, um, except in HP, historic preservation districts, where they would remain conditional uses. The approvals process would be streamlined. Um, first, uh, arts, Arts Commission approval would not be required, and I'll go into why not here in a minute. Uh, Arts Commission approval would not be required. A signed permit would still be required. It's required now, it would be required uh, in the new code. One um, key difference is that applicants uh, will, will strike the language in the existing code that says applicants for signed permits have to be licensed signed contractors because it's, it, it doesn't make sense for mural artists to have to be licensed sign contractors. Um, if you're in a design district, a certificate of approval would still be required, but we are uh, embedding, expanding the process that would allow staff to administratively approve murals if they meet all the criteria. Again, instead of having to wait a month for a meeting to come, it could be possibly, if you have all your materials together, it could be just a matter of days for staff to approve it. Um, we, the uh, proposed new code uh, would allow text up to 10% of the area of the mural or 2.5% of the area of the wall up to uh, the maximum size you could have for any sort of attached sign. So the process in the existing code, the existing process, a mural has to go to Arts Commission, design review, then if it's in a design district, 
development services, where they get the permit, um, before the permit is issued. But the new code would uh, eliminate the Arts Commission step. So if you're in a design review district, you would go to design review first. Uh, one reason design review is still part of the equation is that um, most of, most if not all of the design review districts have guidelines against painting and painted surfaces and many others have guidelines against obscuring important architectural details. So design review and once you get that then you can go to the permit desk, get your permit and your permit is issued. Again, having a permit records information that the property owner has approved, who's installing the work, and that it was lawfully established. So um, here is some, uh, uh, some of the proposed new language about um, you know, the signed permit requirements for murals, a, a, a site plan, um, a scale drawing, color photos, color drawings will still be required. They'll just be checked off by the, the permit desk, not Arts Commission staff. Um, applicants uh, for murals don't have to be licensed sign contractors. There is still a fee. There's a fee now, there will still be a fee. It's the same fee same sign permit fee as it, as it used to be. Uh, then, um, yes, and the mural still requires a sign permit. It requires one now, it would require one in the new code. Uh, another change is uh, that uh, VERA waivers would only be required uh, for, for, for art, for mur in this case murals, uh, purchased with with public funds. If it's a, a private mural, uh, that's, that's between the artist and the property owner. So the standards for approval, many of these are uh, very sim identical, if not very similar to what they are now. Um, and uh, you'll notice uh, none of these have anything to do with content. And that's what made staff feel comfortable that they could be administered uh, by staff, by a permit desk, by design review staff, because it's, it's physical things that can be objectively assessed, you know, over, you know, what wall is it going on? Um, is it creating a, a traffic hazard? Is it going on a building that was lawfully established? Um, uh, is it uh, extending above the roof of the building, for example, things uh, that, um, that can just, they're physic related to the physical nature of the mural um, and that don't relate to content. So you're probably wondering also, well, hey, then what's Arts Commission have to do with it? Don't we have a role? Yes, of course you have a role. Uh, you'll still get, uh, uh, monthly and annual reports about a uh, mural activity. Um, uh, the Office of Arts and Cultural Affairs will still assist mural applicants and property owners with uh, navigating the approvals process and providing uh, advice and assistance. Uh, well, another thing that will remain the same as it is now is the very successful live painting event permit so that uh, artists can get started even even more quickly uh, than than the new process will allow. So our schedule is um, to uh, to publish a draft of the code uh, starting in mid September that will be available for public comment. You will get get a link uh, to review it. Um, and that'll be your opportunity to comment in detail. Then um, in the fall, uh, take the ordinance through design review, historic preservation, and back to Arts Commission. Again, I hope by November, uh, then on to Planning Commission and City Council.
So with that, um, I will uh, open it up for questions. I'm happy to back up to any, any specific uh, subject. Commissioners, are there any questions? Commissioner Kovash. I have several, yes. so if anybody needs to interrupt, please do. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do people know, besides us, about the public comment? How is that advertised or uh, it, whatever? It, um, it uh, will be published through the city's social media channels. Is it on like the water bill or anything? Um, it can be. Oh, okay. Um, on the neutral content, I get that part because we've already been doing that, but you talked about the new um, stuff having um, improved aesthetics and context sensitive. So could you help me understand that in terms of neutral content? Um, in terms of the goals? Well, if you're having neutral content, how are you going to apply some sort of context judgment and aesthetic judgment. Yeah, the, the, physical, the physical context. Uh -huh. What about aesthetics? Uh, the um, aesthetics, I also think, relates to the physical placement. Like, is it going on unpainted materials? Is it on a subsurface, a, a substrate that extends above the parapet or outside the wall? Is it uh, obscuring existing, uh, existing windows? Okay, that makes sense. And then this is the last part. Um, what does proactive enforcement mean? Um, proactive enforcement, right now, the um, uh, most the majority of the city's code enforcement is on a complaint basis. So the city, with few exceptions, the city, you know, there aren't city inspectors going around uh, looking to uh, issue citations. Um, it's mostly based on people um, uh, uh, calling it in. Uh, where did you see the, I'm trying to think where that was. It was on one of your slides, I can't yeah, remember. I think it was one of the earlier slides. Yeah, it was one of the earlier slides. We are, oh, improve proactive enforcement. Right. Yeah, part of that, well, there's two. Um, one idea was, well, the idea of the sign code is not to expand code enforcement. So <laughs> I'll say that. Um, uh, if the reg new regulations are more clear, we think that will help with code enforcement because it'll be more black and white and objective if something is not meeting the code. And it'll be easier to locate in the code. Uh, we are, for, um, for general signage, uh, we are uh, improving some definitions for abandoned signs and dilapidated signs that will make it easier for the city to get those removed. Will you treat the murals in the same fashion? Well, that's as what a sign? you know. Right, right before this, I was talking to Robbie. I said we need to look at that through the lens. We, like, uh, I haven't looked at that section through the lens of murals, mm -hmm. but I need to because I don't think uh, my gut is it shouldn't be exactly the same. Right. It, I actually lied. I have one more question. Um, you talked about the text again, and it's still part of the the process, are there additional fees still for signage versus murals and is that why you're looking at text? Because before text was like the decision point between a mural and a sign. Correct, and uh, that frustrated, um, oh, let me get to that, yes. Um, Yes, before that was true, but that frustrated a lot of artists because a lot of artists, artists felt strongly that, you know, sometimes the word, a name, an expression was really critical to what they were trying to say. So uh, we wanted to allow it. Um, the artist, the artist focus group um, also wanted, wanted it to be allowed. We wanted it to be allowed, uh, but staff felt we had to limit it, um, well, that it couldn't be any larger than the text 
you would be allowed for an attached sign. So if it exceeds that, then they would have to go back and redesign the mural? They would, if it's an existing mural, it gets to stay the way it is, yeah. Um, yes, they can uh, redesign it uh, to shrink it. We are also looking at um, studying a process where if, some, if an artist proposes lo more text than what's allowed, they could come get a recommendation from the Arts Commission and the planning director could authorize larger text because the Arts Commission would be evaluating, hey, is the use of text, is that being done in, a, um, in, in support of artistic expression mm -hmm. or is it really the name of the business? And you know, again, not getting into content, but there would be a process to get a larger text. Okay, that's all, thank you so much. Um, Commissioner, I'm, Commissioner Cooper. I'm confused about what involvement the Arts Commission has because it sounded like the commission was really out of the murals. Uh, so at what point would, and that we aren't evaluating content, so at what point does it all of a sudden turn into enough At what point does it end up back with the Arts Commission? Because it looks like the Arts Commission has been written out of this completely. The um, uh, two or three places. One, um, I'll ask you for a recommendation for your endorsement of the new codes. So that's one place you'll touch it. And if you have any, in the public comment period, if you have any specific suggestions, recommendations, uh, that's another way uh, to be meaningfully involved. Uh, correct. Uh, the, with the exception of the murals that want more text, the Arts Commission would not be approving each application. I, I guess I'm, again, curious as to how more text, it, less art makes it more the realm of the Arts Commission as opposed to less text and more visual depiction. Um, I, I guess yeah. somehow that doesn't really make sense to me. <laughs> that given that in, in the past we've interpreted, hey, if it's text, it's a sign. But if it's no text, it's, it's murals. Uh, yeah, we can, um, we can study that a little more. Well, that's like saying we're going to flip-flop that. And if it's text, now, it's be now it becomes art commission area territory, and the art itself is not. I mean, I, I don't, that seems a little bit inconsistent to me. Okay, well, there are, like the Allegria mural, I mean, that was approved by Arts Commission, and it has a significant text statement, but yes, well, um, yeah, well, so you, what would you suggest? Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I okay. just was confused by, uh, one, my, my general understanding of murals is this is something that is artistic, and that would seem to put it under the Arts Commission. The way you're writing this, this new interpretation or, or new configuration of the code is writing the commission out of the process so that the Arts Commission will no longer be involved um, and that there's no consideration for content at all. Correct. Yes. And does that mean that anything at all can be put in these murals if people get a permit to, the permit to put something at a location with absolutely no consideration being given to content um, Correct, correct. There are state statutes relative to uh, uh, indecency, uh, but yes, and there would be no content, I mean, it, there's no content restriction. Commissioner, Commissioner Eichmann, let me add another layer to that. In, in, in the last several years, um, 
murals have become very, very popular to where districts have taken on um, uh, a number of them that change out and change out every six months. I mean, it's and, and part of the role that the uh, Arts Commission have played has been sort of advisory to those districts in terms of master planning and really thinking that through. And I think that the level, the quality level of the work that's being done through those master plans has been heightened by that process. And so you're taking yeah. that process out of. No, um, no th thank there, you. There's for nothing here that motivates the artist or the district to come to Arts Commission for that kind of guidance. Yes, yes. Thank you for thank you for bringing that up. Yes, we did. We uh, did not intend to uh, remove the curatorial plan process because it's been wildly successful. Uh, so um, uh, we have uh, put in uh, language clarifying that the Arts Commission may still uh, approve curatorial plans and all the benefits of the curatorial plan, like only having to get permits once. So who yeah. determines that and guides them back to the Arts Commission? If I'm they sorry. don't have to start at the Arts Commission, who guides that? Uh, that's why we're putting it in. Right now, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, right, uh, curatorial plans as a thing are not in the ordin are not in, are not anywhere in the code. But if you don't know that you need a curatorial plan, who guides that back? Well, to that's the what I'm saying. Commission? The reason artists know about it is because they call Robbie and say, hey, I want to do a mural. And once they start talking through the process, then she suggests, hey, it sounds like you might be a candidate for a curatorial plan. And they go from there. So we're embedding in the new code, there'll be a section talking about that curatorial plans are a thing and that they're administered by Arts Commission. So that'll be, it'll be in, uh, it'll be, I don't think it shows up on here. It'll be in the mural section text so that when artists, property owners go to the section, they will see that curatorial plans are a, are a thing. And that'll, that's how they'll be aware of it. Does that answer your question? So, I have a question. OK, Commissioner Hill. Oh, okay, Commissioner Williams. <laughs> okay, I'm I, I'm sorry. I'm trying to understand. Um, so I, it might be a two-part question. Um, I hope it makes sense. Um, so the the first question is is kind of like what Commissioner Cooper was saying. Like, um, I'm on the commission. I assume as an artist. So, f for instance, murals. If, if the art part is already done, I guess, or taken care of, and then it comes to us on, say, text, then I'm just trying to understand, like, as, a, as an artist on the Arts Commission, um, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to understand, like, how, how me deciding on if, if this text is um, to promote a business or something, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it make more sense for me as an artist to uh, help with the artistic part as opposed to like trying to make sure there's, there's not, the text isn't bigger than it should be or so, I don't, I don't know. That's my, that's my first, that's what it sounds like. I could be wrong. Um, and then my second question is, I would like, the the project purpose i was just trying to understand like is the purpose of the purpose of this to um be more efficient for or easier for the artists for the city for the for the you know the 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 business owner who owns the the building um because as somebody who who is an artist or has helped put on you know, events and, you know, gotten artists for murals and things like that. Like, I, I'm trying to understand, like, is this, will this be more difficult for me to understand? Is there another layer now? Is there, is, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, uh, the, the, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, tan I'll tackle your second question first. Yes, the premise is that it's easy, easier for everybody 
everybody who touches the code in whatever way. So easier for artists who want to get a permit to install a mural, easier for staff to interpret what the ordinance is saying. Uh, the existing ordinance is very difficult for staff, for staff to interpret, so that makes it even more difficult for us to explain to others. Uh, so easier for artists, easier for staff, easier for uh, property owners uh, and businesses to more readily understand what they're allowed to do in terms of size of sign, type of sign, placement of sign. So that is the intent. Uh, then uh, second um, question about, so how is uh, the uh, commission supposed to, uh, how, how does the commission evaluate whether or not text is of an artistic expression as opposed kind of feel like the um, the art part is taken out of it once it gets to, to us. Does that make sense? I was just using the text as an example oh, because, oh, you said, um, because you said uh, if there were text that was such and such, then, it, would, then it, it may be brought back to us. So my question was, you know, um, if the art part is already taken care of, and it gets back to us and it's like, okay, take a look at this text. You know what I mean? Um, right, yes, yes. The, um, um, the, well, <laughs> the, um, the, con yeah, the concept was, the artist focus group, well, there were, and it's not just them, I'm just using them as an example of various uh, information we gathered, believed that an evaluation of their expression or media or color or whatever, that that was inherently subjective. Uh, so, that uh, to make the process more objective, could we concentrate the new guidelines on size, placement? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah no, no, go. <laughs> um, so I agree with that. Um, it is subjective, but um, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not, I guess my, my, what, it ha, what it sounds like is that even if we take the, the Arts Commission out of it, there's still somebody who's deciding if it's, if it's if, you know what I'm saying, if the art is subjective or not, right? You're not, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if say like, you know, um, there's a, an event next week and we're going by what, what, this, what this has, and um, the the um, the muralist, the artist, whoever has a piece, and they want to put it up. Somebody's still deciding if it can go up, right? Correct. They still have to get a permit. Right. So 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 I, I guess what I'm saying is is like is like as an artist. Um, I feel like, yeah, even if we take the commission out of it, um, they're still, a, they're, they're, they're still having to ask, you know what I'm saying? Like if it's my building, if it's, if it's my building and I say, I want a hot dog on this building and I just like hot dogs. My, I, I, sell, I sell jeans, but I like hot dogs, put a hot dog on this building, right? Um, if I still have, if that, if that still has to be permitted, somebody's still deciding whether or not I could put a hot dog on my building, right? And that, and that group or that person who decides it, um, if it isn't this commission who, who's com com comprised of, you know, more or less artists and people in the arts community, somebody who has nothing to do with artists deciding whether that can be on the wall is what I'm asking. Uh, um, yes, um, yes, you could put a hot dog on it. Yes, the content the, the person issuing the permit 
the person checking it is not evaluating the content of it. And that has come up. That's one reason I included this photo of the ramen restaurant, because when it came in, it was interpreted as a sign, because it's got ramen noodles and eggs, and it's on the wall of a ramen restaurant. And that was a content-based distinction because the interpretation was, hey, that's a sign because you're advertising ramen. It's so obvious. It's so obvious that you're advertising ramen. And I don't exactly, well, it was already painted before it came in for a permit. And I think they shrunk, um, they shrunk the business name uh, to make it legal. But um, if, if we're only looking at size and placement, then the approver would not be looking at, oh, well, there's, it's, it's hot dogs on a hot dog restaurant. Because this has come up before about like donuts on a donut restaurant, vegetables on a vegan restaurant. I, I, I guess I, yes. what I'm trying to say is, yeah. is that it's not about, it, uh, what I'm saying is, is like, they st it still has to be permitted. It still has to be approved at some yes. point. Somebody has, yes. To, yes. has to be okay with it. Yes. Somebody, somebody has to like it. And no. there has, you know what I'm saying? They, Some, d they don't have to like it. They're just, the reviewer is looking at, at these things. Is it securely attached to the building? Is it using paint, tile, or mosaic? Is it, um, on a building that's lawfully established, that should go without saying, but sometimes it's not. Is it constituting a traffic hazard? That could be, you know, I could see getting into an evaluation on that if it's, is murals are allowed to, and is, are allowed to be lit. So somebody could determine that it's because of where it is on the building, and how bright it is and how much it's blinking, that it's a traffic hazard. Um, does not compromise the proper function of a building. That's like if it's installed uh, in front of a door, if it's installed on a panel in front of a door, that would be impeding the function of the building. Um, uh, not installed in a way that conflicts with setbacks um, and not allowed above the height. So yeah, the person reviewing it doesn't have to like it. Okay, but there's somebody reviewing it is what I'm asking. That, that's, that's, yeah. you, you answered that, the They would just be looking at, hey, you know, um, does, it, does it meet these standards? Yes, no. I mean, if it, does, if it does, then they get a permit. If it doesn't, then the artist, somebody will have to go back and make sure that it does. Okay, yeah, you answered my question. Does that help? Yeah. Commissioner Hill? Okay, so, so I have a couple, like everybody else, I got a couple of things. Sure. And, and starting with whoever thought that Julie's art was like a sign, that seems crazy to me. But I think, JB, to maybe look at this. So sometimes one of the issues we had were muralists came to us and they wanted to put up a mural. And because of the nature of the art form, you know, a 30-day window to meet with the Arts Commission to get an okay seemed kind of onerous, right? And so I think that the role that we could play is that we set policy, like this is what we expect a mural, you know, to be part of an appropriate, and I use that word, probably, it's probably not the wrong, right word, but this is what we feel like a mural should be, basically. And then, and then the permitting can be done at the staff level by Robbie. Like we wouldn't have to see every individual mural because we've already said they have to meet these certain guidelines, right? They have to be, artistic merit, they have to blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't know that I agree with the notion that like a hot dog on a hot dog restaurant is necessarily a sign. I mean, I guess that's a conversation people could have. I think it's still art. And then I question the more in the weeds here, just the notion that a percentage of the art is lettering it, it seems like it'd be easy for someone to look at something and say, well, yeah, that's the name of a restaurant. And, and this is, you know, this is not the name of a restaurant. This is art. And so when you see like some of the murals, when they do their tagging, and it's elaborate letter forms. I mean, that's 100% letters. So I don't, I don't know how the percentage really helps us make that determination. So, th 
so that's my comment on the percentage issue. But I think on a broader scale, I think that the, the role the Arts Commission plays is to set a policy. And, and we say, this is what our expectations are for a mural in Oklahoma City. And then, and then this Robbie and her staff can look at, you know, as these, as these permits come in or applications come in, they look at it and they say, yeah, it meets the Arts Commission's you know, standards for murals so that we don't have to look at every single piece, you know, every mural that maybe comes across and add 30 days, you know, minimum to the artist working on it. Because, uh, and I would love to hear Denise's view on this since we actually have a mural artist sitting right here. But when you have like Jex comes by and does the BCC stuff, I mean, he's here for a weekend and he leaves. So granted, people should do some planning and maybe you know, they should come to the Arts Commission 30 days out and do this, but sometimes that's not a, even available. Sometimes these guys show up and they do it and, and they leave and, and we benefit by having an, a piece of art by a, you know, a person of some, that's well respected in that community. So I don't, I don't know if that's helpful, those comments, but um, that's, that's kind of the way I'm looking at this. Like the code is nice in that it lets us be policy makers and let staff do staff work. Um, and then like I said, the percentage thing, I, I just, I don't understand how that works at all. But um, that's my two, two or three cents worth. That's my percentage of information I have. Okay, no, that, that's, that, is, that is helpful and yes, um, yes. Uh, any any suggestions on, that any commissioners have on on what we could embed in here that would improve quality of the murals would be fantastic. Would be or or the pro and the process uh, would be great. Denise, Commissioner Duong, um, do you have a response? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the text thing is extremely confusing to me as well. Um, because like who's one, like, I mean, there's certain things you can definitely gauge as a sign and not a sign and something that's a mural. But from my understanding, this pretty much streamlines like the mural process a little more, which I really appreciate, to be honest. Right, exactly. <laughs> because like, yeah, there, there are moments where you're like, I don't have 30 days to wait to get something approved. And so like, if this makes like streamlining the process, you know, faster then I'm like, I'm totally for it. So I think that's the most frustrating thing for mural artists is having to go through so many applications because you have arts commission, like downtown design review, and urban design review, and all, all sorts of reviews. And so like, yeah, if you can cut, cut back, you know, one or two, that'd be nice right. just to get like the application to like the right offices and they can, they can, you know, review it and then you can alter, make, make a, alterations to whatever it needs to be done, so I'm for it. The biggest thing is that um, that there is no um, regulation of content and there is freedom of speech, you know, I think I was, at, and so I, I, you know, I, I, after hearing him say like the streamlining process, sounds, it makes a little more sense, um, but I just felt like you know, I guess I was trying to understand if there was, you know, somebody else saying to artists like, well, instead of having this group decide, we get to decide, but it sounds like it's just helping it move quicker, the process quicker. Um, yes. Um, so yeah, but I, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't think there should be a, if you ask me, I don't think you should even have to ask. It's somebody's building and they own it and they can't, they want to paint on it, they should be able to paint on it, you know what I mean? But that's just me, so. Commissioner Eichmann. Yeah, it, it, Commissioner Hill, I think you made an important distinction here that I missed somewhere in the presentation, uh, is that the Arts Commission would have eyes on this. I mean, it may not come to us. I agree, I, I love the idea of streamlining the process and making it easier for the artist and the, the, the district trying to do these kinds of things. But the fact, I mean, if, if in fact, Arts Commission staff does have their eyes on these uh, the permitting process, then that's, a, that's, that's an incredibly different thing than what I heard originally, which it just sounded like it was somebody in, some, in, in a different department in the planning department. I think that's an important distinction. Thank you. Does, well, uh, um, does anyone have, um, so uh, the artists, the artist focus group, asked for more text area. You're, 
several of you have observed right now, that's just the easy way to, in, currently, currently, that's the easiest way for staff and others to distinguish between a sign and a mural is to just look, does it have more text than just the name or, or not? So um, I would like the commission's opinion on uh, whether they think it's valuable to try to allow more, more text or if the commission would prefer um, it, less text. Chambers. I can think of several, well, living artist and artist in the canon of art history and public art exactly. who use text, which is a symbol, as an instrument. They can be layered to create um, different values and shading. It's, it's, it becomes the brushstroke. It just happens to be a character. So I'm, I'm curious how we could modify that language in the n next several sessions, especially when we get to add our comments. I agree with Commissioner Hill that this specific rule of 10% of text doesn't really speak to the possibilities of how artists could use those symbols. Um, so I, I'll, I'll make that one of my my comments that I add to add better language to this code, because there are contemporary artists now who don't work on the scale of public art, but I can think of easel size or smaller works of art that are completely used by various typography. Um, even celebrated, our, our most celebrated artist in Oklahoma City, um, Oklahoma, Ed Ruscha. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's, I'm using grandiose language in this case, but yeah, no. text dominates his style. Um, so I, I'm, I'm curious how we could change this language that allows um, artists to use the medium um, in a greater way. And then something else I wanted to add beyond this code, it's fascinating for us to be here at this, this point. I remember several chairs ago, um, when we talked about content and we, we tried to limit our, our role as being stylistic or aesthetic police. Like that's not our job because my preference may not be your preference. What you like in that neighborhood may not be what that neighborhood or community prefers. We, we stayed out of that business as much as possible, difficult though it was. And then court cases came along later that further limited our role um, so that's not been a part of our policy or practice for quite some, well, quite some time is an exaggeration, for three years. We'll leave it around there. So we've stayed out of that business, avoiding censorship or, and even moving past that stylistic police or um, aesthetic police. I, I like the idea that we, the work that we've already done as a commission, we, we did our mural, we, we had a mural task force bring these recommendations that we approved. So this practice is already part of our, 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 our not bylaws, but policy, if you will. We chose these rules for ourselves. And now we get to see this work furthered um, by many more voices incorporating those who practice and um, staff who have to process this. I, I'm excited to see this presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Loftus. I delayed you this, quite a bit yeah, for your comment. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> still organizing my thoughts here. Um, Lisa, I think it's been an excellent presentation. Are we going to get any input from Robbie on her thoughts about this? Because it strikes me that this is, this is impacting the, the uh, mission statement of what we're all about. Are we? Um, I believe that this will be presented by Lisa to our commission and our feedback would be given um, through avenues that city planning department provides for us. Maybe Lisa could uh, expand on that. Yeah, uh, so Ro Robbie has been 
integrally involved in the development of uh, this portion and other portions of the code. So uh, certainly, um, yes, um, uh, I want, I want uh, detailed comments. You'll be able to see the proposed ordinance text in mid to late September. Um, if you want to get together for, um, you know, a, a work session, I'm happy to pull that together. Also, um, so uh, um, I've been managing the project. We also have a uh, code consultant who is also an attorney um, on the project. Uh, I'd be happy to convene everybody. Um, we've had, I don't know, al hours of meetings discussing, you know, where where is the balance between um, ease and uh, uh, interpretation, uh, so, um, but yeah, we're, we're hap happy to talk further. Commissioner Cooper. <clears throat> my, my memory is that the language regarding the percentage of, uh, of a mural that was dedicated to text was we were trying to move murals away from being signs and that people were using a piece of art to get away from the requirements for signs. And that's when the 10% or the percentage of the overall piece of, piece of work became important so you couldn't avoid the signage ordinances by calling it a piece of art. If you had too much text in it, that was actually throwing it into being a sign. It didn't have anything to do with the artistic quality of the piece of art and the use of letters or numbers or whatever, uh, that kind of graphic input didn't have anything to do with it. It was, you were, take, you were trying to escape the sign ordinance. Well, if now the mural is, if there's no regulation as to what it is, as a, what a mural really is, and there's no regulation with regards to anything that's in it other than that paying a fee, that 2%, the lettering, is, it doesn't make any difference about, it doesn't make sense to say, well, if there's too much lettering, that throws it back to the Art Commission. That, that doesn't make sense. Because the whole purpose of having that limitation in the first place was to establish that de minimis use of lettering to show that it was a piece of art and therefore not subject to the sign code. Now it doesn't make any, the way this is being proposed, it doesn't make any difference. So t turning decisions uh, regarding the uh, con involvement of the Arts Commission because of letters, well, if doesn't, it just doesn't sure. make sense. Okay, now I, I hear what you're saying. We can also um, uh, remove Arts Commission from that and have people go to Board of Adjustment. I'm mean, just saying that the distinction is there really isn't a distinction between a sign and a mural. It's just something for which an administrative fee has to be paid in advance in order to put it up. That's all. So it doesn't make any difference what it is. And the number of, uh, now if it's in a, an area that has uh, like historical preservation that have other requirements, uh, then th that group can determine whether or not it's appropriate to their area. But lettering and other types of artistic de depiction, the way you're talking about the ordinance, does not differentiate between something that is a mural and something that is a sign. There really isn't any distinction for the way that, and there's, since there's no evaluation going into an artistic uh, merit, the way, the content of how they're, it says securely affixed, but it doesn't have anything to do with whether or not you're using appropriate 
types of paint, that it'll last, how, what, the, uh, uh, what the value of it is. It is just material put up on a wall uh, with no control at all as to its quality or the way that it looks. Now, there's some of that that I don't see as necessarily being good for people who do high quality murals because they care about the product. But this makes it open to anybody to come and get a permit and just slap something up on a wall with no control whatsoever. I don't know that that's necessarily beneficial to the community, but that may be another discussion. <laughs> okay, thanks, Terry. Any other commissioners with comments? Commissioners, Commissioner Mossant? <laughs> on a, a building in, in uh, someplace in New Mexico and had beautiful flowers all around it. So it's, that's all it was. So that would not be a mural. That would be a sign, right? Uh, in the current code, it would be a sign. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, there's a lot of wording that I think is very inspiring. I have a question. Is it, is it more expensive to put a sign up than it is a mural, like permit-wise? Um, I don't, I don't know. It depends on size and material. I mean, it's probably this, and, and who's doing it. I mean, I can, I could I, tape I mean, off a sign that says Lisa's hamburgers, you know. Yeah, I, but, I mean, I'm just, I give it a, I'm just trying to understand why, why there's such a limitation on text as a, you know, um, I, I, it would make yeah. it would make sense if like well, if, actually, if you're gonna put a sign somewhere, then there's these fees that come along with that. Then I would say, okay, no wonder they want to do a mural. They just want they want to make sure that you know they don't get you know taxed because it's a, it looks like a sign. But if if it's the same, Madam Chair, if I may, yes. I, I think this is a process question too. This is being presented to us. Um, as a first presentation of proposed code updates, and you mentioned the timeline um, where this will allow public comment, um, including this body to share our thoughts further. Um, we can address to specifications like the 10% rule. All of that is open for comment and modification. Um, so over this next timeline of comment, various review bodies, including us, the Planning Commission, and ultimately the City Council, um, will have many opportunities to add further direction, further language, ad adopt this, thinking of specific examples, artists that we know, murals that we love, um, to make sure that this code speaks to that and speaks best for what's needed in our community. It, does that clarify? timeline and process and where we can contribute and modify things that maybe don't quite make sense to us. And I, I think we can do a, a study session on this. It, it obviously seems like something that's important to the commission. Um, and we can work with staff to get a date and a time, even if it's a Zoom study session, to talk about some specific items. I, had, I have one specific question. And this is related to the VERA waiver not being required. Um, in the case that a piece of art is damaged by graffiti, does the city still have, how can the city abate that damage without having a VERA waiver in place between the artist and the city as well? Well, current, yes. so currently it would be through code enforcement. Currently it would be through code enforcement and the owner would be required or they would go to court and, and pay fees and fines if they did not do that. But what would happen after that point, that's a good question. So we did talk about Vera as we were preparing for this and we can talk about it a little bit more. Okay. That might um, be a good item for the study yeah. session just to make sure that we... Yeah, um, the existence of the Vera waiver is between the owner, it, the property owner and the artist. 
So if we did they not, did we not have a Vera waiver between the city of Oklahoma City and the artist as well on private yeah, property? Yeah, yeah, we would keep it for for publicly funded projects. The city would require it because it protects the city's Correct. process. Correct. Yeah, as the owner, we can add that to the study session because I, I want to further understand that. Well, thank you for lively conversation. Thank yes, you to thank Lisa you. for being here and presenting this. This is very important. Um, without further delay, I'm gonna move on to item 3B on our agenda, the James Stewart Golf Course. 1% for art for enhanced art marker at 928 Frederick Douglass Avenue in Ward 7. And Randy Marks is here to present this information. Good afternoon, commissioners. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon and talk to you about this project. First, I want to uh, take you back to approximately April 19th when you approved this design uh, movement by Michael Hoffner, and this is for the James Stewart golf course. And here you see uh, two different uh, guises of this gate. It's a sculptural gate that allows access to the interior of the court, of the golf course from the parking lot. So here you see it in the closed position and here in the open position. And this illustrates two different aspects of the uh, leadership of Mr. Stewart in an exhorting role when he's talking to people uh, and urging them to action and then uh, when he's actually leading. And this is very much what Mr. Stewart did. And just as a reminder, James Stewart was the head of the adult chapter of the NAACP at the time of the sit-ins, the Cats Drugstore sit-ins and the various other sit-ins in the late 1950s. Mr. Stewart was also on the National Committee of the NAACP for uh, 24 years. He was part of the National Brain Trust, so he was helping to set the agenda for the NAACP during those years of the uh, early days of the civil rights era. Uh, he is a towering figure in Oklahoma City history and in national history and far too little known. The artist Michael Hoffner um, set out to address that and tell a story, start to tell a story about Mr. Stewart. You approved this, you, you heard it on April 19th, you approved it, recommended it to council. Before it got to council, we got uh, communication from Councilwoman Nice that she wanted to talk about this, and so we requested that it be taken from the uh, council docket so that we could discuss the issue with Councilwoman Nice. Her objection wasn't to the art per se. It was uh, an objection about um, this is perhaps a missed opportunity here is a chance to tell the public more about Mr. Stewart, but what do we see? We see a silhouette of Mr. Stewart. We don't see Mr. Stewart himself. And she put this in a larger context. She said, you go around Oklahoma City, you see plenty of bronze sculptures of white people everywhere on the grounds of, the, uh, uh, of City Hall, uh, certainly at the fairgrounds and many, many other places. Do we have sculptures of black people? No, nope. we have symbolic representations of black people. So we heard her concerns and we met with her two or three times, including an extended session where planning director Jeff Butler met with her and we came up with a suggestion and that was on this project, go ahead with this particular project but then enhance the storytelling of Mr. Stewart in both pictures and words as part of a very enhanced art marker. Now this really expands the definition of art marker as you're getting ready to see, uh, but it fully tells a story not only of the art, but of the man that is being depicted in the art. And this would be done in this way. First of all, we'll look at the golf course. This is a, uh, the architectural rendering. Uh, your, Imagine that you're on the course side of the clubhouse and you're looking to the, um, uh, to the southwest and you would see something kind of like this. You see where the gate is there on the outside of the course 
And then the, the bottom picture, of course, is a plan view of the, uh, of the uh, uh, site plan for the course. So you're looking inside. The square rectangle indicates where the gate would be outside. And the three marks inside show where there would be enhanced information on the interior of the clubhouse. And then uh, and another exterior piece, which you, is not numbered on this particular um, drawing, but we'll see it right here. On the exterior of the uh, building, as you're getting to walk in the main doors, not the gate, but the main doors, there is a brick wall which we have proposed to put a life-size or larger cutout of Mr. Stewart and use a, a photograph. Hopefully, we will be able to find, through contact with family members, a picture of Mr. Stewart in golf attire. If we're not able to find that, we may use something, uh, a photograph like this. This is Mr. Stewart as a young man when he was well known for his taste in hats. And so you can imagine a life-size image of Mr. Stewart welcoming, welcoming people to the golf course perhaps this image. Uh, we propose that this would be done photographically. Uh, it would be, the photograph would be printed onto ACM, which is aluminum co composite material, has a very long lifespan, uh, and um, would, be, um, would be an actual present rec pictorial representation of Mr. Stewart. If we use this image, then obviously we're going to uh, Photoshop the legs in, so it is, uh, uh, this is the extent of the photograph. So we would work, work with someone to, to create a photo, to Photoshop the legs in so that we have a life-size image. Going into the building then, if you walk into the main part of the building, the, the uh, pro shop is right in front of you and to the right. If you go to the left, you go down a hallway to, uh, that ends up in the dining room. And along the hallway walls, we imagine a minimum of three markers that would talk about different aspects of Mr. Stewart's life. Uh, this is one, this is just a mock-up of a one that we may do. So Mr. Stewart was well known in the 30s and 40s, uh, and I think on into the 50s for a newspaper column that he wrote called Jimmy Says, in which he made comments on, on events happening all over Oklahoma City. It was a very popular uh, column, and uh, his personality really shone through in it. So what we hope to be able to find is an actual uh, facsimile of the column from the Black Dispatch that we can put on one of these. But there'll be a minimum of three that talk about Mr. Stewart. So as you're walking down the hallway, these would be on your right as you're going more or less to the north end of the building into the dining room. Now, once you get into the dining room, there is a location where this really famous photograph of Mr. Stewart with his lifelong friend, Ralph Ellison, and then this is Herbert Ellison, Mr. Ellison's brother. The, the full photograph uh, could be reproduced and put on the wall, along with appropriate text just talking about Mr. Stewart and a different aspect of his life. Um, Mr. Stewart and Mr. Ellison played in the high school band together at Douglas High, became lifelong friends. Uh, Mr. Uh, Stewart ended up actually having to move to Wichita and graduated from a high school in Wichita, but they resumed their, their friendship when he came back to Oklahoma City and remained friends all through their lives. And then finally, at the side of the gate, there would be an enhanced marker that would talk both about the art and then a little bit more about Mr. Stewart. And we would draw a one-to-one -one correspondence between the outline of Mr. Stewart that would be taken from a photograph and then the reproduction of the photograph on the art marker so that there is a very direct connection there between the stylized image of Mr. Stewart and an actual photographic image. So we presented this to uh, Councilwoman Nice and she said, uh, can you guarantee that we can get that? And we said, yes. We can guarantee that, that we will be able to do at least this much. Now, we have enough money that we, meaning staff, can work directly with fabricators to have this produced and installed. We don't have enough money to hire the artist, Michael Hoffner, or somebody else to do this. The cost would go up exponentially. 
if we were able to do that. So we're asking you to, um, we're asking them to approve, correct? To recommend under an art to, to recommend this enhanced art marker. Um, that en encompasses all four of these different elements. Uh, it will not have to go back to council. Uh, the contract will not have to go back to council because we're not changing any aspect of the contract with Mr. Hoffner. And so the, you make the recommendation that we can proceed. This is what our planning director, Jeff Butler, asked us to do. And he just wanted, he wanted you to be fully informed about it and give your recommendation that this is an, uh, appropriate for this project. And so we present this to you. Commissioner Loftus. Randy, um, the contractor is is Mr. Hoffner, correct? Is he design build or does he get is he getting a general? Uh, he is the artist contractor and he is he is designing and fabricating and installing. But he would not fabricate this work, is that correct? He will not be involved in this work except in an advisory role. And so would this go out to uh, a bidding of some sort? No, we will do all of the work in-house. And then, then uh, I will work directly with, we don't know who yet, perhaps Walker Sign, uh, perhaps one of the other fabricators to actually create the pieces. And you feel fairly certain that you can get the money, right? That we can get the money? Yeah. Well, the money is there. The money is, is in the 1% for art budget. So in the 1% uh, legitimate use of the 1% for our budget is an art marker. And that's expanded out into these three different locations, yeah. right? I think it's a great idea. I was on this jury and I felt like uh, we weren't doing a whole lot to tell, tell anybody about uh, Mr. Stewart's history. On the other hand, this was just a gate. <laughs> it wasn't a biography of-, of You're uh, exactly right. So I, I like the idea. Uh, that's all I've got. Commissioner Kovash. I have two questions, um, and they're related on the um, the composite panels. They'll be cutting those things at the factory or the producers, so they'll be sealed, so there won't be any kind of water getting in, because we usually think of this in terms of whole panels. Yes, I don't know the actual process that they go through for an exterior application, but the material will be appropriate for an exterior application. And I'm, I'm assuming at this point that it is going to be ACM and probably uh, all or most of the interior elements will be if we find out that there is any reason why we cannot use it on the exterior, we will use whatever is appropriate for that particular piece. It may just be, it may potentially be aluminum and not ACM. Uh, and then the part two of the question, I've seen similar projects where they've blown, up, especially historic pictures, and I've just, it's not impressive in terms of the resolution. It looks like a pixelated copy of a copy. Um, will you be building in some sort of quality control into the whatever contract or RFQ or RFP that you do? Yes, yes, definitely will. And thank you for uh, bringing that up. That will definitely be noted in, in the um, contract or work order that we have with the fabricators. And I would strongly suggest that you have some sort of sample done before you approve, like, like a step, you know, step by step approval process so that you can see and say, no, that's not good enough. You're gonna have to do better. That's not what you promised, you know, that kind of thing. Thank, thank you, you very much for those suggestions. I appreciate that, Mr. Kovash, and that, we will do that. That's it, thank you. Commissioners, any other questions? Um, I have one quick question. Who, who is on the advisory uh, portion for the content of the marker, the narrative piece? Well, we haven't addressed that yet. Uh, I, I think that to the extent that I thought about it, we would certainly, uh, get the uh, input and approval from our planning director and from Councilwoman Nice at a minimum. 
uh, we have we have talked with other people also about uh, about this generally, not really specifically, but generally. I've talked with Anita Arnold at Black Inc. about uh, about getting more information, and we will be following up with other people, including uh, some of the people that actually knew Mr. Stewart um, uh, personally. Thank you. Well, hearing no further questions from commissioners, I would open the floor for a motion. Move, a, <clears throat> move approval. So uh, uh, motion made by, okay, Commissioners Cooper and Loftus. Mark, um, any, like any further discussion? Were my comments, did they rise to the level of including that as a mm. condition? Did, do either of you want to include those as conditions to your motion? How would you, uh, what would your preferred phrase be um, to include those? Ensure that the contract requirements include quality step approvals or something like that. Commissioner Cooper and Loftus. I, I guess I'm not sure how far we want to get into making requirements on a, on a, on a process that we're not controlling. Randy's controlling that. Um, well, we don't get involved in contracts anyway. This is a, a city function, so, uh, well, and I think Randy's qualified to make those kind of judgments. So the original motion would be to recommend this art marker for this specific piece. Um, Commissioner Hill, do you have a suggestion? I don't have a suggestion, I just, some clarification on this. So, so this project, it's a 1%, but there's no artist involved in it. There is no artist involved, that's correct. Okay. To, to some extent, the, art, the, the artist for the project has been involved because he has advised. And what, so, do we have so a, there is we, artist input. Is there a feedback from the municipal counselor on whether or not it's appropriate to include pro process? Or? established in that and what we have is extra contingency money that we'd like to add to the art marker and continue to produce further markers to help identify Mr. Stewart's life. This, so all the money is there and already approved. We're just making sure that the commission is aware of what we're doing and, and that we can answer all of your questions and make sure we get a recommendation from you before we take action because this is addressing uh, Councilwoman Nice's concerns. Does that help? It helps a little. Is is there a piece of art? Yes. In addition to the art markers, which the which gate. we did already approve the okay, gate. Cool. gate. Yeah, the gate was the, the was my, the, the work bad. of art. It's okay. <laughs> and that's what Commissioner Loftus served on that panel. But we don't really, when we go through the art selection process. We don't normally get this into what the art marker said. You know, we have a recommended standard from the Arts Commission, and it's on our website. But this is even taking that farther because of concerns that were brought to our attention. So, so this yeah. is essentially an expanded art marker. Correct. Yes. So I move approval of the expanded art marker with quality control by city staff. By city staff. <laughs> Commissioner Loftus, you uh, approve of that edit? And, second, whatever that was. And this is, and, and, and note this is, is, okay, and note this is a recommend, we, we recommend to this. Um, hearing no further discussion. <laughs> um, Mark, can you call a roll call vote? Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Commissioner Kovash. Yes. Commissioner Chambers. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Duong. Yes. Commissioner Eichmann. Yes. Commissioner Hill. Yes. Commissioner Loftus. Yes. Commissioner Mossant. Commissioner Williams. Madam Chair, that completes the vote. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item number four, the cons actually, I would like to do some housekeeping. We did not receive Lisa's report. Thank so you. I need a motion to actually receive Lisa's report from the planning department on the code update. 
Um, I move receiving the report. Okay. Second. second. And then a second from Commissioner Hill. And then hearing no further discussion, we will move towards a roll call vote to receive item 3A. Did you get that mark that we went back? We okay. did go back. I apologize. So, so we'll need you to roll call vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Bailey? Yes. Commissioner Kovash? Yes. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Duong? Yes. Commissioner Eichmann? Yes. Commissioner Loftus? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Mossant? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Madam Chair, that completes the vote. The motion passes. Thank you for apologies that that was skipped. Now we are on item 4A, and this is our consent docket. We have two items this month. 4A is 30 block, a mural by Scott Hill for this land yoga at 401 Northwest 30th Street in Ward 2. And item 4B, jungle, a mur mural by Chad Bullsinger for Reagan Klein at 203 South Klein Avenue in Ward 6. Robbie, can you present these two items, please? Thank you. 30, we'll go with 30 block first so you can see where this is located. Even though uh, I had to do further checking to make sure this was not a historic site and maybe something was left off a map because I was worried. But yes, it was all confirmed that this is not part of the conservation district or anything. Um, here you can see the building and the wall itself. It's surprising that it's not. And um, here you can see that the wall was already painted. This, because the wall was already painted when we received this application, this qualified for a special event permit. And the special event, because all of the paperwork was filed all the way through permitting, this has already been painted. So, and you can see here it's 675 feet. And uh, the applicant was very appreciative that the Arts Commission had this accelerated process. Then on, on item B, this is at the Farmer's Market location. You can see Reno right there. Here's the building itself. Here you can see this also is a wall that is already painted. We do have the applicant here if you have any questions. The applicant may at some point, because he's still working with an artist that comes in from another state, the art, they may require a special event permit, but we wanted to go ahead and begin the process because there will be Arts Commission review, design district, and a permit all have been filed. And so we're just going through that process. If anything, um, you know, along the way, if we need like a day's notice for a special event permit, we'll go ahead and authorize that so the artist can get painted. Um, and here's the proposed mural. So that is the consent docket. Hearing the applicants are present, do you, uh, do you wish to approach the podium and add anything? Okay. <laughs> Commissioners, are there any questions for staff? Madam Chair, I move consent. Um, there is a question um, from Commissioner Kovash. Um, actually, two, uh, well, one, the statement, yay, on the th building at 30th and Walker. That's a hideous building, and this will make it so much better. Um, but on the um, farmer's market building, I'm sorry, on the farmer's market building, it, the wording just made it sound like this is new construction. Is this new construction, or is it just? No renovated no this this is a building that's already there and the walls were already the brick walls were already painted which means that it qualifies to be considered for a special event permit that's and all. so the applicant got all paperwork in for a permanent mural all the way through development services and the sign permit and so that's why at any point now we're just taking it through those steps slowly and if at any point during the process the artist needs to show up we will authorize it for special event to get it done Thank because you. it's all eligible. Mm -hmm. Opening the floor back up for a motion from Commissioner Chambers. Second. I move consent, Madam Chair. And a second from Commissioner Eichmann. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Mark, can you help us with a roll call vote? Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Commissioner Kovash. Yes. Commissioner Chambers. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Duong. Commissioner Eichmann? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Loftus? Yes. Commissioner Mossant? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Madam Chair, that concludes the vote. The motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to item five, discussion action on reports from committees. 5A, Commission Advocate. Um, Commissioner Salyer is not here. Is there any report? No report. Yeah, no report. Um, 
Item 5B, Arts and Culture Building Trust Task Force. Um, Commissioner Chambers, is there anything you'd like to report? Oh, we are still scheduling meetings. Right. <laughs> Correct. I think our next meeting say? is sometime in September, Correct. potentially. Anything that you would add? No, just that there's going to be some surveying along with that meeting. So, it's it, And it's going to take a little longer than we originally anticipated because we didn't all expect everyone in the world to go on vacation in August. So it, it, and July. It became impossible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a like large a, ma a mad rush. Too. Yes. And it's, it's incredibly difficult coordinating all of these schedules. Mm -hmm. right. um, Robbie uh, is diligent and has tried <laughs> to get everyone in the same place at the same time, even right. virtually. Um, so a slight delay in what we promised about a report this August, but it's moving forward. Yeah. Here ends my report. Mm -hmm. Next item, our staff report. Yeah, so Randy and I have both been super busy lately. I wanted to report that um, last month there were three separate projects at Manuel Perez Park under the 1% that Randy was able to oversee completion on. And these were by the artist team, Chris Canelli, Tony Thunder, Carlos Barboza, and Jose Scott. And then he also oversaw one interior glasswork by Rick and Taste Tracy Buley for the Whitewater facility in the Boathouse District. He's already got two also anticipated for this month. So we'll see how that goes. And then on private project completions, Nick Bear completed the Northwest 39th Street. Dusty Gilpin completed the Pro-Am in the Plaza District. Uh, two private, uh, private sculptures were also installed, Tom Shannon's Infinity outside the Science Museum and Folded Circle Split by the late sculptor Fletcher Benton in Carolyn Hill Park outside the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. So it was a busy month. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving to I, uh, comments from commission members. Are there any commission members that wish to speak? M Madam Chair, you skipped yourself. Oh, including me. <laughs> I, I have nothing to report. Um, and uh, Madam Chair, I do have a report to share or um, a statement um, that would pot potentially move to further action by the commission. Um, I will quickly read this. Um, we've all had time to closely watch the city's arts and cultural program grow into a robust system and service for our community. And with that growth in some time, we've also had opportunities for evaluation, both formally and anecdotally. Those anecdotal personal accounts are important to me. Oftentimes, the anecdotal is dismissed as subjective, inferior data, or unreliable, but I think those personal experiences of citizens working through our city's systems as case studies. Around the area of diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, I think our staff have adequate information to make a few administrative improvements fairly quickly I also think that further intentional review is necessary to ensure our city's maturing arts and cultural affairs program reflects the full spectrum of its citizens. A few areas that I suggest for review are the following. Artist, recru artist recruitment, building a pipeline of future talent, and identifying ways to break down barriers of participation. Both elected officials and staff have shared their concerns how privilege and access to resources may create an advantage over talent and creativity. The pool of artists participating in city arts programs at its best should be an authentic reflection of all of our communities. Criteria used for public art selection and best practices we should take steps to ensure that the policies and processes we use for the advancement of arts and culture in OKC do not perpetuate harm. For example, the adjudication process for art selection is a high bar. Demanding the best for our city cannot be faulted, but requiring or favoring artists who have been able to build substantial portfolios in full-time public art making also pro protracts those barriers. Addressing the above uh, concerns should impact another long-term goal, creating an outstanding public art collection. Now numbered at over 200 objects, the city's collection is substantial. Taking these steps will move our collection forward, better representing all its peoples and their stories, hopefully generations, four generations, and long after all of our appointed terms have ended. 
I respectfully submit these comments for record and to our chair for the next steps. In discussion, um, we have worked with uh, an artist, a local artist, Tiffany McKnight. We've had several conversations informing many of these proposals. Um, DEIA work in our community is of critical, and those who are doing so in the worlds of arts and culture are in high demand. And we are one more body asking individuals to share their expertise, their time, and in many cases, on a voluntary basis. Um, so here ends my report, Madam Chair. I receive that as chair and um, ask maybe a further question of, do you, do you think this is appropriate for a task force specifically focused on these items? Yes, Madam Chair. Would you want to co-chair that with <laughs> Tiffany McKnight? I, I believe in part of our discussion, um, we hope to focus on these issues, and Tiffany McKnight has agreed to co-chair. Um, I am a white man on this commission, and far too often, um, that person of power, and I, I want to be careful how I phrase this, does not need to be the dominant voice on a commission whose body of work um, is to amplify others. So I consider my role is to help practicing artist Tiffany McKnight um, navigate through our city's systems. Um, so I will gladly help in any way I can to make sure a diverse spectrum of voices are amplified um, and know how to get to places like this, the city's Arts Commission, and share their concerns. And as part of that, I would ask that you bring recommendations back to the Arts Commission so that the full body can be kind of a part of this discussion as well. I will make sure as many voices um, get shared back to this committee as possible. Thank you. Okay. Items from commissioners, Commissioner Kovash. Um, could Robbie or Randy remind us of the um, dedication that's happening at the Science Museum next week? Isn't that next week? Uh, Commissioner Eichmann. Uh, it is uh, next week, I believe it's the 25th at 10 o'clock at the Science Museum, and it'll be a dedication of Infinity. And Tom, uh, the artist Tom Shannon will be there. Thank you. Any other items from commissioners? Any items from the public? Hearing none, I will remind everyone that we have a meeting on September 20th, 2021, here in the council chambers. I will be on maternity leave and Vice Chair Kovash will be uh, manning the chair. Um, please be nice. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, you guys are great. Um, and adjourn, thank you.